So you're having problems starting your Windows 10 up. You go ahead and start it. It says, hey, startup repair fails to actually repair your computer, and you're just in this continual boot loop. You followed the other YouTube videos about restoring registry, and they just don't work. So in this video, we're going to rebuild that startup partition of Windows 10. I'm going to show you how to actually do that. And let's go ahead and jump on the desktop and get into this. This video is brought to you by CDN77, the content delivery network used by space agencies and CentOS. I also am using this on ChrisTitus.com to speed up my website. So if you're interested in this, click the link in the description. Okay, so here's your advanced options. Um, from your boot screen, you get like this. You could reset or go to advanced. And you go to advanced, you hit startup repair. Try this first, obviously. But more often than not, this is going to fail. So what's your next options? Now, every other YouTube video out there says to do a registry restore. The problem I have with this is most of the actual restore options have been disabled by Microsoft these days. After October 2018 and 1803 and past, Microsoft Windows 10 stopped doing registry backups, which is a huge problem. So what do we do? And what do we do if we have a broken startup? And that's what I'm going to cover right here. And we're going to rebuild our system reserve partition. So let's go into our command prompt. And this will uh, go ahead and launch into it. If you don't have this, you can also utilize installation media. However, if it pops up on your startup, you can also do it from this section as well. So uh, I also have an installation media, so I'm going to show both I in this. We're going to first start with, hey, we're having problems booting in. We're going to not use installation media. And then I'm going to also show the other way after this one. So we get in here, we're at the command prompt, uh, and we want to actually repair our system. So first thing we're going to do is go disk part. And if you want to follow along here, I went ahead and created a copy paste guide basically. So you can pull it up on your phone or a secondary computer if you like, and then easily see all these commands I'm typing in. So you don't have to actually write them all down. So we're in disk part. And we want to begin our repair. For first, we need to select our first disk. So we'll go select disk zero. Once we do this, we'll list the volumes on the disk with list vol. And you'll notice several different things here. We have three volumes that it displays. Uh, letter D is actually a removable media. You can see it right here. So this is actually my USB drive with a version of Windows, Windows 1903 to be precise. Uh, and that one we won't be touching. So remember letter D. However, you'll notice that system reserved, which is actually our boot partition, is letter C. And then letter E is our main partition, which has Windows installed on it. So what we need to do is first rearrange these. So C would be the Windows partition and E or G whatever any partition would be system reserved it doesn't matter so much on the actual lettering of the system reserved because it doesn't technically get a letter uh, when it comes to windows but c just remember that should always be our system so we'll go ahead and fix this real fast so we'll first select vol zero which is system reserved and then we're just going to assign this a different letter instead of g so we'll just say assign space letter equals g colon. This assigns that. And now we need to select volume one, selects the main system partition, which right now is labeled E. We want that to be C. So let's do the same thing. Assign letter equals C colon. So now we should have the proper mount points on all our drives. So if we do list vol, you'll see that G is now system reserved and C is our main system. So this is good. We can exit disk part by just typing exit. And now we want to set all our boot sectors across all our drives on here. So uh, this will set them all to NTFS, which is the Windows standard. So let's do that. Type boot sect dash NT60 all dash force. Hit enter. This goes ahead and sets all the boot sectors properly. Now we need to do a rebuild of that system partition. So let's say someone went in and deleted all the files in that system partition. This would rebuild and repopulate all those files. So we can do this by going BCD boot our Windows partition, which we just labeled our system C. Remember us assigning the system drive C? Windows space dash forward slash S 
And then the drive of our system partition or system reserved, which we labeled G, and then we do space F all, and then we hit enter. This rebuilds all the boot files. And now we can do a, a simple rebuild. So now we need to build our master boot records. We'll do boot rec. Now this is where you see a lot of other guides pick up, but they miss this first part, which really messes things up. So we'll do boot rec forward slash fix MBR. And then we'll do boot rec fix boot. And if you get an access denied, uh, that is okay. Uh, I've noticed that this is kind of almost like a bug in the repair cycle, but it does repair properly, even if you do get this access denied a lot of times. And then finally, to end all this out, I like to do boot rec rebuild BCD. And this usually rebuilds the boot record. Now this didn't actually identify any Windows installations, but that's okay. Uh, again, it seems like in the latest versions of Windows, they've almost broken this functionality to where it's not reporting properly, but I noticed it still does do a good job of, of actually fixing the computer. So let's go ahead, turn this off. We're gonna go ahead, reboot. All right, so you'll see the reboot here. And from this reboot, it should go ahead and boot back into Windows just fine. Now, I wanna go ahead and go over actually booting in from installation media because a lot of times the startup partitions just broken beyond all and it says, hey, can't even boot into a, a Windows partition. Okay, so now we're gonna show a broken uh, startup uh, thing. So you see operating system was not found. Try disconnecting any drives that don't contain an operating system and press control alt delete to restart. You'll just do this and it'll just continually do this uh, over and over. It'll just print this message. You have no version of Windows. For this instance, you need a USB drive with Windows 10 loaded. So you need to get a second computer, load that up, just go to download Windows from Microsoft and create your own uh, secondary boot on a USB. So once you have that Windows 10 on a USB, you can continue from here. So let's go ahead, restart. I have that USB drive in and we'll go ahead and try and repair it from this starting point. So it's starting back up. We'll hit F7 for a boot menu. I've seen the boot menu be F11 or F12 or even F10. It, it depends on the system, but just know it's usually at F key, usually F5 or uh, all the way through F12, depending on that. If you can't find the boot menu key, usually F2 or delete will get you into your BIOS and you can menu select your drive from here. So I have a SanDisk USB drive that has a basic version of Windows. Now remember, we're not wiping out Windows or reloading it, we just want to repair that startup partition. All right, so here is our basic install screen. Now a good little shortcut to get around this and get right into our command prompt from our installation medium is to hold shift and press F10. This brings right into here and then we can start typing in all our stuff. So what I'm gonna do is just repeat all the steps and I'm gonna fast forward through this because it's gonna be the exact same steps as I followed at the first part of this video. All right, I've now put all the commands back in in that exact same order. Again, check the website. Uh, link is in the description, chrisditis.com, for this how-to guide of rebuilding your entire boot sector. So with this uh, whole boot partition uh, rebuilt, we can go ahead and exit this and go ahead and exit our installation media and let this computer reboot. On reboot, it should load right back into Windows. As you saw, we wiped out pretty much the entire uh, boot partition, and now it's just simply rebooting back into Windows after rebuilding it. So this is the whole, uh, from the start to the end, rebuild of a Windows boot partition. Now, one last thing I wanna leave you with, um, a lot of other YouTube videos I said showed how to restore a, a registry backup. However, Windows 10 no longer does registry backups as of like about a year, year and a half ago. So we want to probably re-enable this feature so you can actually utilize the repair steps in those YouTube videos to repair a modern day Windows 10 system. So I'm gonna show you that real fast as just kind of a bonus here at the end. We'll go ahead and go start, run. We'll type reg edit. And then from here, we'll go into H key, local machine, be system, current control set, control, come down to session manager, and then configuration manager. 
Now, Configuration Manager doesn't have anything in it. However, there was in an older version of Windows 10, everything before 1803, October 2018-ish, and before had a backup of the registry. So we want to re-add this functionality so you can utilize that other fix. Uh, should something happen to Windows, you, you'd have a backup of your registry. So we'll go D word, 32-bit value, and then we type capital E, enable, capital P, periodic, and then capital B, backup. And then we just change this from a value of zero to one, and then we simply reboot. So we'll go ahead, and I'm gonna show a reboot just to make sure we didn't mess anything up. Um, but this will help with the e enabling periodic backups of your registry. So if you ever did need to restore your registry, it would actually do something. So that should get you sorted for now, but you're probably gonna run into more problems down the road because it seems like Windows 10 just gradually keeps getting worse. That's why a lot of my content on this channel is geared towards Linux desktop and why I'm wearing this shirt because I absolutely love it and I've recently converted in the past year. It's amazing how far it's come, especially in gaming. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.